Hello? I have one question for you. Just one question. Have you subscribed to Yvonne channel? Yes, I have subscribed to Yvonne channel. I have subscribed to Yvonne channel. Just subscribe. I have subscribed to Yvonne channel. I have subscribed to Yvonne channel. I have subscribed to Yvonne channel. He's telling me that he needs to subscribe to Yvonne channel. Yvonne channel. Yvonne channel. Yvonne channel. I have subscribed to Yvonne channel. I have subscribed to Yvonne channel. I have subscribed. They have subscribed. What are you waiting for? Click the subscribe button and the notification bell. I know you will do it. Thank you. Hello, Agnes. Hello, sir. <laughs> you are weeping? <laughs> My parents have found out. How? You told them? My mom has been suspecting for a while. She confronted me this morning. She didn't even ask. She told me point blank. Agnes, you are pregnant. I couldn't deny it. My parents are disappointed in me. They've been lashing me with words since yesterday. <laughs> you see now, you caused it. I caused what? I mean, it wouldn't have come to this if you did what I asked you to do. But you refused. I refused because I don't want to lose my life. By the way, we've gone beyond this abortion issue. What are we going to do now? Hello? 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 You are not talking. You were talking. I finished talking. I ask, what are we going to do? I don't know. You don't know? Actually, I know. But I don't know if you will do it. What? Agnes, will you marry me? <laughs> Hello? Who is this? Uh -huh. What can I do for you? Hello? Speak up now. Hello? Hello? Hannah? Yes, Auntie. You want me to use my saliva to make my tea? No, Ma. Where is the hot water? It's on the burner, Ma. Why? The electric jug has a faulty plug is bad. Since you knew that, why didn't you boil the water before now? I was using one burner to burn yam and the other to prepare omelets. 
There you go again. Story after story. Please get out of this place and bring me hot water. I'm sorry. <sighs> what is it with you and Anna this morning? You raised your voice against her. Mommy, don't mind that foolish girl. She's just lazy and useless. No. Maybe I've always cautioned you against using foul words on people. Especially that girl. She's not a maid, you know. We brought her into our home after she lost her credit in the car crash. So she's more or less a member of the family. Come to think of it, even if she were to be a maid, she still deserves to be treated with courtesy. But mom, she caught on my nerves. Yes, some people will get in your house. Some others will even step on your toes. It is your duty to know how to control your temper. You forgot to say thank you. Ah. To whom? Anna. For what? We trained you and your younger ones to always appreciate every favor you receive, no matter how little. What favor did I receive from her? She did what she had to do. Simple. Well, I will stop praying for you. The Lord will deliver you from this your bad attitude. Mommy, I don't have any problem. Me, I know that I don't have any problem. We fasted your breakfast so as not to run late for your job interview. That's how we do it. She didn't have done the offer pass in the Hello? Hello. You are not talking? You are already married. You have a wife. Wife? You, you mean that woman that calls herself my wife? That woman has five children for you. Dickin Hamos. I've told you, don't call me a Dickin. That's what you are. The church ordained me. I didn't ask for it. I told the pastor I don't deserve it. He told me God instructed him to make me a deacon. <laughs> I had no choice. I had to obey spiritual authority. Now, the title haunts me anytime people add it to my name. Well, that's between you and your church. What I'm saying is that that woman has five children for you. That woman is a mistake. The five children she has for me, they are all mistakes. I've made up. I, I mean, I'm making up my mind to send that woman out and bring you in. In fact, I am ready to travel down to Lagos to meet your parents, to formally demand your hand in marriage. Dickin Hamos, do you know what you are saying? You are old enough to be my father. You know that. No, I don't. Because I have never met your father. And by the way, age is just a number. It fades into nothingness. Where real love exists. Agnes, I love you. I want to marry you. Will you marry me? Hello? Hello? No, no, no. No! That will never happen. I will never allow my daughter to marry a married man. Never! My dear, we have to put things in proper perspective here. The deed has been done. Our daughter is pregnant. An abortion is not an option. Good enough. The man who is responsible for the pregnancy is not denying it. Oh, Jebby, let him deny it. I will release the last curse in my mouth upon his miserable life. <laughs> no, my dear. You will do no such thing. Remember, you are a Christian. We are to bless and not curse. Mm. You mean I should bless the man that is out there to destroy my daughter's life? Well, if you ask me, I think Agnes should take a buck or the blame. She was simply careless. Who would believe that a well-trained girl from a Christian home who we'll go for NYC and become something else. When we took her to the airport to catch a flight to Joss, we expected her to return with her NYC discharge certificate. We never knew she would return back with a pregnancy. In fact, she's a complete disappointment. 
Disappointment is an understatement. She's a complete letdown. So, what do we do now? About what? The man. I don't want to see him. No, we have to see him. If not for marriage, then to arrange. Yes, arrange how he's going to take care of the baby or babies when Agnes puts to bed. She can't be a single mother, you know? Hmm. Madam, I'm sorry. I, I was cutting the flowers. Don't give me that. Are you cutting the flowers with your ears? I have been calling and shouting on it since. What's going on there? What's the meaning about that nonsense? I'm sorry. That's it's really an debate. You keep giving stories. She's been shouting at me because she's delivered it to the kids. You listen to me. Okay, ma'am. I'm sorry, ma'am. Please, please, please don't beg me. The more you beg me, the more I get. The young man tried to explain to her that he did not hear her call because he was busy trimming the flowers at the backyard. He barely refused to punch. She was not in six. This girl is always touch. I don't know what is wrong with her. I remember the other time she had a shouting match with a sales girl at the mall over a little matter. It took me a while to calm her down after what she said to me. Mommy, you know me. I don't take nonsense from people. <laughs> I told her, in life, you will meet with three categories of people. Sensible people, senseless people, senselessly senseless people. I told her it's a duty to know how to maintain our cool. The last two categories. Otherwise, they will make no sense out of our own sense. I thought she got the message. Unfortunately, she has refused to change. I don't know where she got her hot temper from. Of course. It's the old man that is still very much alive in her. But we've been praying for her. Our prayer can do just a little. The girl herself needs to accept the fact that she has a problem and ask God to help her. I pray God will touch and free her from the remnants of the kind of nature that is troubling her life. Amen. Darling, time waits for no one. We have to get set and get going fast. Yes, dear. That's all right. That was my wife. She's close by. Thank you, sir. Uh, once more, sir. I accept I acted irresponsibly, sir. But, for, please, for God's sake, Forgive me, forgive me, sir. Well, the person you really need to beg for forgiveness is my wife. She's been really distraught since the news of this ugly incident broke. You know him? This is the man. Oh, yes. The man who impregnated Agnes. No. I mean, this is the man I told you about. Brother Shebu, since I have agreed to marry you, I believe it was spiritually and morally wrong for me to keep this important part of my life a secret from you. I have a baby. You what? I have a baby. A girl. She's now three years old. You were once married. No. I was raped. A young man who came for his national youth service in the village where I lived with my parents 
got a one-room apartment in the building next to us. My parents benevolently allowed him to come and fetch water from our compound. He eventually became so close to our family. One thing led to another. The man ended up raping me. He raped you? He raped me. God is my witness. It's a long story. What about the girl? She's with my parents in the village. They agreed to take care of her while I continue with my studies. Hmm. What of the man who got you pregnant? Hmm. This is the man. Amos Zalmini. This is the man who forced himself on me and forcefully took my virginity. Amos, you raped me. You got me pregnant and thereafter fled the town and never returned. You never cared to know what became of me and the pregnancy. Amos, this is the baby that came out of that pregnancy. Agnes, your daughter. If not for this God-fearing man, my dear husband, who accepted me and the baby, only God knows what would have become of my life today. <sighs> Amos, your waywardness has gone its full cycle. Your promiscuity eventually pushed you to sleep with your own blood. Now your daughter is pregnant for you. Oh my God. <laughs> Mabel, what is it? Daddy and I just returned. Is out there making a call? Anna told me you shut yourself up here since you returned and you've been crying. She said she tried to find out what the matter was, but you refused to respond to her. Mabel, what is it? Why are you crying? Oh, I see. You missed the interview? No, Mom. You failed the interview? No, Mom. So what is it? Why are you crying? Mom. Something terrible happened to them, Mom. Demos, <laughs> your wickedness has caused you to destroy my daughter's life. <laughs> Mr. Man, I'm here to tell you the simple truth. You are the real definition of irresponsibility. For God's sake, why did you choose to mess up the life of our precious daughter? Why? <laughs> I even add that you are a deacon. A deacon. Ha! It is a shame when a man who is in dire need of salvation now calls himself a deacon. Only God knows what you used to hoodwink your church into making you a deacon. Can you imagine the so-called deacon? He's ready to abandon his wife with five children just to get married to a girl who turns out to be his own daughter. Amos, shame on you. Shame on you, Amos! Shame on you! Shame on you! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I beg you. Shame on you. I beg you, please, forgive me. I beg you, please. Now, you need to put yourself together and tell me whatever it is. Mom, I got to the interview early. The interview went well. The panel of interviewers was so impressed with my performance. After the interview, the head of the panel asked me to wait to see the MD of the company. 30 minutes later, I stood in front of the MD in her office. Good afternoon, Ma. Good afternoon. Yes, Please sit down. Thank you, Ma. The chairman of a panel that interviewed all the candidates spoke so highly of your performance. Wow. As a matter of fact, he recommended you for immediate employment. Wow, thank you so much, Ma. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma. The MD went on to write something on the file containing my credentials. Thereafter, she picked the intercom on her table and instructed somebody on the other end to prepare my letter of appointment. I was dazed. I shook myself to be sure I was not you. Hello, Mr. Dennis. Please prepare this lady's letter of appointment. I need it right now. Then it happened. Everything happened so fast. The story changed. The MD took a long look at me and said to me, Sorry, I think I met you earlier today. I can't remember, Ma. I do remember. I remember the face. Yes, you are the one. On my way to the office this morning, my car developed a fault. When my driver could not face the problem, I told him to invite my mechanic. I left him with a car and flagged down a taxi to take me to the office. Along the way, a lady flagged down the taxi in which I was and entered into the back seat where I was seated. That lady was you. Do you remember? Madam, shift now. Oh, sorry. Sorry. She's very well. I'm sorry. Look at how you are sitting as if you are in your living room. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Put your left leg on the other side. Oh, sorry. There's no space here. This man has a bag in between his legs. Sorry. Oh, sorry, my bag. Sorry. The boat is already full. I'm so light. That is none of my business. All I know is that you're inconveniencing me. And if you don't know how to sit, in a taxi, please, go and buy a personal car. Ah. Sorry. Oh, Oga, I beg, stop, 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 stop. Uh, it's not as if you are carrying me for easy. free. Madam, take it easy uh, now. Stop madam, now, you are not carrying me for free. Oga, stop, stop, stop. Ah. Take it easy, madam. Please, please. Stop. drop me, let me stop. join stop. another taxi, please. They are with them, she will soon get down. Oga, stop, is it by force? Okay, okay. Let me balance, madam. Let me balance. Excuse me. And let me get to where I can stop. What's all this nonsense conveniences from me? But I'm trying to explain now. I'm sorry, there's no space. Oh, God, drop me. Is it by let force? Me get to I will where pay I my can money. Stop you now. Ah. Okay. Drop me. I'm not going again. Thank you. Nah. Academically, you are qualified for the job. But morally, you are not qualified at all. Yes, you have paper qualification to do the job. Unfortunately, you do not have a proper orientation to relate with other people. 
You know what? He never knew that for you, the interview actually took place in that taxi. Your behavior in that taxi was a real definition of whom you actually are. I'm afraid your bad behavior in that taxi has cancelled your good performance in the interview. Sorry, we cannot hire you. Oh, no. Please, ma, I, ma, I, take your credentials I'm sorry, ma. and go away. I'm sorry, ma. Please. We can't ma. work here. Ah. We cannot work here. Ma. Please, leave. Ma, I'm sorry. Now. Ah, please, ma. Please, ma. Please, ma. I'm now. honestly, I'm so sorry, ma. Please. Leave now. I'm, I'm very sorry. Lady, get out. I said, leave now. Please. Leave I'm very now. sorry, ma. Please. Leave ma. now. Leave now. Leave now. Leave the office. You cannot work here. <laughs> you see? I never stopped warning you. I always told you to deal with your bad behavior before it deals with you. <laughs> now, your terrible behavior has taken you full cycle and has landed you where you never planned. You lost a job, which you should have gotten on a platter of gold because of your humor. <laughs> My dear, your real problem is the old nature. I've always told you this. You need to submit yourself to the slaughter slab of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Cry unto the Holy Spirit to help you put the old man to death. That is the only way out. <laughs> Well, as for me and my wife, we have made up our minds to forgive you. But what you need to do now is to confess your sins to God and cry unto Him for mercy. God! Have mercy, God! Say